Elden Ring too hard? Sick of rolling? What if I told you you could stand still with a shield and never have to roll again? Experts can't believe this one trick to save your Elden Ring playthrough. This video is brought to you by... No one. Hit that subscribe button. So for character creation for this build, we're either going to play as the Vagabond or the Hero. You should watch my class guides if you're looking for that initial beginner setup, how to set up this character and play those initial few hours. This is a mid-game build and I'll be showing areas past Stormvale Castle, so be mindful of that, but I'll be avoiding any major bosses and big spoilery stuff like that, so you should be fine to watch this video. Hey, you play this build, this stalwart knight is basically we're going to park ourselves behind a giant great shield and poke enemies with a lance, and that's pretty much how everything will function. This build works because with a piercing weapon, like a lance you can attack while still keeping your shield up so you don't have to drop your shield to actually deal damage you can keep that shield up and just keep poking away at the enemy you do less damage this way by attacking with your shield up but because we're always behind the shield you're basically safe all of the time so you don't really take damage unless you do something wrong i'm also using the barricade shield ash of War on the great shield to allow me to block almost any attack and take little to no stamina damage by doing this this basically allows you to block all heavy attacks and everything and you will take less stamina damage or in some cases is no stamina damage by doing this and the greater your shield is in terms of its actual physical resistances and its guard boost then you can almost take no stamina damage from doing this this works well on pretty much all enemies great and small because you can just block every attack that's coming towards you and just keep poking away at them without actually taking any damage this build excels in 1v1 combat especially when you can guard counter them because we're always hiding behind the shield you are always in the prime opportunity to guard counter and then if you do do the stance break you can follow up with a critical hit and you you can just deal heaps of damage this way, keep the pressure on, and we can heal some of that damage back if we're using the Assassin's Crimson Dagger, which is perfect to combo with this build. I'm also purposely in a heavy load state in this build because realistically, you're not going to be rolling, so you've probably done something wrong if you do have to roll out of the way because we're always going to be conscious of our stamina management here. So even if you're in heavy load, which I currently am, and I've tried to play this build that way to see if it's viable, and it definitely is because you can just stand your ground and tank most of the damage into your shield, and you only really have to dodge if something's trying to grapple you and in that case you're better off either just backstepping because the backstep animation isn't slowed down or just jumping backwards because again that animation isn't slowed down either so you can avoid the attacks that way rather than like fat rolling out of the way you will need to also be careful of some of the larger enemies as they might hit you on the head rather than your shield so just be mindful that you know you either need to take a step back or take a step forward so that you can actually tank that damage into the shield rather than just getting bonked on the head Let's move into the Ash of War, and for the Barricade Shield, this is dropped by the Knight's Cavalry in the Weeping Peninsula. You have to beat this Knight boss at night, so just go to the Castle Ramparts and wait for night, and you'll be able to beat this boss and get this Ash of War. This is great to put on your shield, any shield really that can take this, and then you can just tank all of the damage into the shield. I'm also using the Ash of War Braggot's Roar on my Lance, and this raises the attack power, defense, and stamina recovery speed of me while it's active, and I'm using this situationally. Occasionally, I will two-hand the Lance, pop this, and then bring Bring my shield back out just to give me more attack defense and stamina recovery and this comes from the guy at the prawn shack if you kill him and you get his weapon you can take the braggots raw off the weapon and put it on anything else for your flasks, you want everything in health, maybe one FP flask just in case you do run out of your FP to use these Ash of Wars, but they're relatively cheap, so you should be fine. Your attributes here are going to be strength primarily, and then stamina, and then vigor in that order. If I did my stats again, I probably would put more points into stamina than what I have here. I've gone very strength heavy. You probably want to balance that strength and stamina somewhere in the middle, and those being your two primary stats, and then into vigor. They're the only three stats you really have to worry about. And the more stamina you have, you know, the more equip load you have, so you may not even have to worry about fat rolling if you did stagger your stats a little bit better than I did here. The Stalwart Knight's gear is really, you know, any good shield that you can get, any good great shield. The best one that you can get very early on is the Gilded Great Shield, which is one that I'm actually using right now, and that comes from the Knight at the Gatefront Ruins. If you just keep killing that Knight over and over and over again, they will eventually drop this shield, and then you're basically good to go from there. But any great shield will do. The Jellyfish Shield is super light, has a decent Ash of War on it as well if you want to try and stay in that medium weight while still using a great shield. The heaviest armor you find is also best to put on anything that's got great physical resistance. The Knight Armor at the Round Table is super cheap. You can grab that very early. The Carrion Knight set at the Rail Lucario Academy is pretty good for resistances. I'm wearing the Gilmore set here, which comes from a bit later in the game, so you don't have to worry about that. But realistically, the heaviest armor you've got that has the best resistances, that's completely fine to chuck on. We're using the Lance, which comes from the Death Touched Catacombs. And while you're there, you should pick up the Assassin's Crimson Dagger as well from the boss at the end, because both of these things are fantastic in this build. You don't have to use the Lance if you don't like this weapon. It just fits perfectly 
perfectly because it does scale with strength and you can put a heavy ash of war on it to scale it even more with strength and realistically any piercing weapon will do that you have but i'd stick to some of the bigger piercing weapons so that you've got a bit more reach because if you have something like a rapier or one of those smaller weapons your reach is much shorter but the bigger the reach the better this build is we're also using the earth tree's favor which i've mentioned in tons of builds this comes from the fringe folk hero's grave just next to the stranded graveyard the first side of grace you go to and then once you've got three talismans it's a little bit situational you can kind of play around with what works for you so the curved sword talisman buffs your guard counter so you do more damage on your guard counter which is just you know good to have you could also buff your stamina with something like the green turtle talisman or the viridian amber medallion which increases your stamina total both of these work great in this build there's a lot of flexibility in terms of your talismans for that third slot but i would really stick with the assassin's crimson tagger and the earth tree's favor in the early stages some quick tips for playing this build is that your shield doesn't block magic lightning and fire damage entirely you can see in the shield stats that it will block some of that damage but it won't block all of that damage you just need to be mindful that you will take some chip damage even if you're blocking and they're doing lightning or fire or magic damage to you attacking through block does less damage as mentioned but you should drop your shield if you're trying to melt something you can just drop the shield and keep spamming away if you're really trying to finish something off quickly or to you know do a critical hit follow up in that way you should always be watching your stamina if you run out of stamina and you take damage you're basically screwed so always watch that stamina when you start getting low just retreat a little bit drop the shield let the stamina regen and then you're good to go when you do bring up barricade shield even just that animation where it brings it up it is blocking as well so just be mindful of that and as mentioned fat rolling doesn't matter but i did touch on it briefly but you can backstep or jump backwards to avoid any attacks that are coming for you so if you press the dodge button without actually moving the analog stick you will do a backstep and if you just jump backwards you can jump backwards so you can avoid some of those attacks coming to you because we don't have any ranged options you want to use throwing daggers or even just craft bone darts to throw at enemies to pull them towards you so hopefully that you can pull just one or two enemies without having to pull entire packs because you, we do want to keep them you know separated and freely fight one-on-one -on -one if possible the biggest piece of advice for this build is don't get surrounded always keep enemies in front of you even if you're fighting a pack you want to keep the enemies in front of you so that your shield is in between them and your squishy body because we will take some damage in this build but we do have a fair amount of health so it's okay but you you do want to try and block all of that damage rather than actually taking damage yourself and i found that i die more in this build not because i've ran out of flasks or you know i've done something bad it's because i am being surrounded by enemies or i've just done something dumb you know it's it's often my own fault it's not because i'm trying to tank damage that all that damage needs to go into your shield you just need to keep the enemies in front of you and you should have a great time with this build this build is very beginner friendly because you just hide behind the shield and poke away at enemies and obviously upgrade your lance to deal more damage even when you're in that lesser damage state by poking through the shield and you can use any other weapon that you see fit for this build if you don't like the lance but but lastly go and check out my spartan build which also uses a piercing weapon which could go well with this build if you wanted to do like a faith version of this it would go perfectly with this build thank you for watching this video till the end thank you to our members for supporting the channel my name is norza and i hope you have a great day